Hi everyone, this video is a time lapse with commentary as well as a showcase of my patience or solitaire game written in my own little graphics engine in C Sharp. The engine is based on OLC Pixel Engine, so it is an abstract class you have to derive from and override the onCreate and onLoop methods. And you have some methods to draw stuff as well as vectors, sprites and fonts. So I started this project by drawing all of my cards and I wanted to make them as low quality as possible. I designed all the suit shapes to be 7x7 7 7 pixels and all the rank numbers and letters to be 5x5 5 5 pixels. So then I made layouts for all of the number cards and decided that all of the aces should have bigger suit shapes so they look nicer. My goal was to make all the textures just once and then write a program to automatically copy them to correct spots on the playing cards so I don't have to do so much manual work myself. So I copied all the card layouts to a separate file and then put dots in top left corner of each place for a suit or a rank symbol for my program to then recognize. I did some work with all the other necessary files for this, spaced all textures correctly and also made a flipped copy of every texture. Then I started writing the code to generate all the textures and I gotta say, this code is ugly, but it kind of is supposed to be this way, I wanted to make it as quickly as possible so it's actually worth my time and faster than doing all the work myself. It loads all the files and then goes through pixels of the number card layouts file one by one and if it encounters a pixel in a specific color, it copies all the pixels from appropriate texture there and when it reaches the end of the file, it saves the result. So then I started working on all the other cards and I gotta say that I am not an artist so they might look like they were drawn by a 7 year old but I am actually proud with how they turn out. Like because I don't do any artistic stuff regularly and also how pixelated those cards were I am actually really happy with the result. I did different shirts for all the different suits to make queens, you know, just added some long hair to the kings. To make jacks, I changed the crowns to these hats. And yeah, then I added all the rank and suit symbols. And I was wondering if writing the code to generate the number cards was actually worth it. But now that I watched this time lapse again, I am sure it was. All this coming and pasting took me way too much time. So yeah, then I gathered all the textures in one big file and filled all the pixels that have to be transparent with a specific color so my engine then recognizes them. And yeah, that was the end of the one. Okay, so I started the second day by checking how big the screen should be and how everything should be placed. I will get to the rules of this specific solitaire in a second. I made sure even the longest possible column of cards could fit and then made all the outlines to be displayed when the columns are empty. I then tried to make something more interesting than just a plain green background, but I realized it's very hard to do something that looks right and also that other games just have the plain green background, so I stuck with that. And then I designed how the backside of the cards should look. I looked for some inspiration online and then made something that I am genuinely proud of. I think it actually looks good for how low quality these cards are. It's nice and symmetric. I used all my advanced paint knowledge to do it. Like, honestly, people underrate this program. You can do so much advanced stuff with it. So yeah, I was ready to start coding, but first I ran into this very annoying error I couldn't fix. So while I struggle with it in the background, I think now is a perfect time to explain all the rules of the game. So you take one deck of cards without the jokers and start by placing the cards like this. What is left will be a reserve. Now you can move any uncovered card onto another one if the one you're removing has a rank one less than the other card and if the colors are opposite. So if the card you're removing is red, the other one has to be black and vice versa. You can also use your reserve. You first go by 3 cards, then when you run out you reset and go by 2, then last time by 1. On empty spaces you can only place kings. Now the goal of the game is to move all the cards from the table to the piles, starting with aces and ending with kings of the same color. 
So when you see an ace, you can take it off and then you can place other cards one rank higher on top of it. But when you place a card there, you cannot take it back to the table. So now that I managed to fix an annoying error and I loaded and displayed the table texture on the screen, I started writing a structure to hold the cards. I chose the structure instead of a class so I don't have to deal with passing objects by reference that I remember caused me trouble last time I did a card related project. Then I made a quick method that generates me a shuffle deck of cards and made array of lists to hold all the columns of cards, a queue to hold the reserve and a stack for the waste. Then I made it so the cards are dealt from the reserve to the table and started writing a method that displays all the cards. I had to count exactly where each card should be displayed and also where the card texture is located in the big file with all the card textures, which as you can see caused me some trouble at first. But I recounted the pixels and then finally managed to do it. I wrote it so also the reserve is displayed and I realized that I missed one mistake that all the cards were displayed one rank higher than they should be and the kings weren't displayed at all, so I fixed it. And I realized I'll be drawing lots of cards so I made a draw card method to make it all easier for me. I then prepared for detecting key presses. I wanted each key press to count just once and then to only count again after it was released. I added variables that hold the position of the currently selected card and made it so W and S keys move the selection up and down and A and D keys move it left and right. I then made it so the pixels on the screen are only updated if something was changed and not every frame to reduce lag. And then in the draw method I made it so a red rectangle is drawn around the selected card. I then changed it to be drawn around the selected card and all the cards under it so it looks way nicer. I made it so the waste is also displayed and decided that the easiest logic to implement first is moving cards from reserve to the waste and from the waste to the table. I made a can place on method that checks if a card can be placed on another one. I made it so Q key moves cards from the waist to the column of the currently selected card and that R moves correct amount of cards from the reserve to the waist and when the reserve is empty it moves all the cards back from the waist to the reserve. The second thing I implemented is moving cards from the table to the foundation. I made it so E key moves the bottom card from the column of the currently selected card to the correct foundation. I then realized I need another key to move the card from the waist straight to the foundation. So I made the T key do that. I then realized I forgot to actually draw the foundation. So once again, I counted the pixels and added it to the draw method. While checking if it works, I realized I also needed to flip the last card of the column after moving the card to the foundation if it was reversed. And then I started working on moving the cards from one column to another. This was the most complicated part. I needed to make it so pressing the space key for the first time holds the selection in place and allows you to select another card. And then pressing the space key again, if possible, moves the selected cards there. I first made it so other actions are locked after the cards were selected and unlocked after the cards have been moved. I made it so A and D keys move the second selection after the cards were selected. The second selection is drawn as a green rectangle. And then I made the logic for the card movement when the space is pressed again and I pretty much finished the whole game. I played around with it to catch some small errors here and there and everything worked fine. So finally I decided to clean up my code a little bit and add some quality of life fixes. I moved a lot of repeating parts of my code into separate methods, focusing first on the part of the code that moves the cards to the foundation, which was written extremely badly. I also made a method that fixes the Y position of the selection and another one that flips the last card if needed. I made it so the selection moves nicer and ignores reversed cards, so when it encounters one, it moves down until it finds an uncovered one. And also that the second selection starts at the first possible place you can move the cards to, so you don't have to move the selection so much. I then also realized that the waste isn't moving correctly back to the reserve, but in the reverse order, so I fixed that and yeah. Then I just try to play the game until I record myself winning it. 
So while I try to win in the background, I have a couple of things to say. I always uploaded coding videos thinking no one would really care that much, but I've been pleasantly surprised before. On my plane boarding simulation, I had someone wanting to check out the code because they were doing a similar project. On my mega tic-tac-toe game, someone actually got the code and wanted to change some stuff so it behaves differently. And on my backrooms video, which maybe does not look like a coding project at first, but it involved loads of command blocks to actually generate the whole giant maze. I got some comments saying how this was the most realistic version yet, which was very nice to hear. So I still don't really think anyone would really want it, but if anyone wants the finished app or the source code or the engine or maybe even my beautiful pixelated cards, just DM me on Twitter. I don't use it at all, but I have my DMs open there and I will get a notification when you message me. So yeah, even if by the time you're watching this video is like two years old and for some reason you would still really want any of this, just DM me and yeah, that's it for this video. I will now cut to the successful attempt and yeah, like and subscribe and thanks for watching.